friends, it's Sonya Miller and welcome back to my channel, Living the Creative Life. Today is one of those days where I feel like doing a little bit of organizing. It's Sunday, it's behind the scenes, my shop is closed, and so today I'm going to work on this magazine rack. I'm going to show you how I bring this brownie frowny piece to life with some paint and pretty papers, and how I go on to make use of it. I'm not somebody who buys a lot of magazines, but I am somebody who buys a lot of something else, and I'll show you what that is in just a little bit. So Matt found this piece for me, shout out to Matt, the hubs. He knows what I like. And so he found this brownie frowny magazine rack, good bones, just need some junk monkey loving. And he got it for all of $4.99. I have got some pretty papers, pretty papers that you guys sent in to me. Just go find some really cute gift wrap that you like, some tissue papers that you like, or even some scrap paper. And basically I'm gonna want a piece that's gonna fit over each side section of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut another piece. Perfect, and now we have two pieces. I'm pulling out my Mod Podge Shabby Chip Brush. We put a layer, a nice thick layer, so that way our tissue paper is gonna make a nice connection. It's got lots of Mod Podge down below it. You can straighten it out as much as you want. For me, I like the wrinkles and the crinkles and everything else because I love time worn and aged. So I'm not going for perfection. So I now will pounce on top of this with my same Shabby Chip Brush. So it's like creating a sandwich, like a delicious cheese and ham sandwich, okay? Except your paper is the filler and your Mod Podge is the bread. I'm getting hungry just doing this project. There we go. And do you see how like on the edges and stuff it didn't come all the way over? Honestly, I could have got really, really crazy, like perfect with it. But again, no need to. It's gonna look gorgeous when it's done. All right, let's let that set up and dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, and I'm going to do same thing with the other side. All right, now we let these two sides dry and then we come back to it. So, all right, so she is drying nicely. Do you see what's happening? She's sucking into the wood. You can see here there's parts that's not completely sucked in and dry this yet, but she is well on her way. The most important thing to know when you're using Mod Podge or when you're using paint is that things cure behind the scenes and things cure typically up to 30 days. So even though it might be dry to the touch, for example, I were to paint this now, it'd be dry to the touch, just know that while you're sleeping tonight, extra things are happening because wood is porous and it continues to suck things in. So a lot of times when I Mod Podge, I love to come back the day after, like when you open your door in the morning for me when I come back into my shop and I look at a piece that I worked on the day before, I'm like, oh yeah. That set up real nice. Remember, because I didn't put any paint onto this brown, brownie frowny wood down below it, what happens is that wood is going to show. And I love, love, love the shabby wood look. While it's doing its thing, we're gonna do our thing in here. I feel today inspired to paint with our stormy forest. Oh my goodness, this is stormy forest. Do you see it? It is a beautiful, beautiful blue, oh, bluish gray. Just, it's one of our most popular colors. Everybody loves on it. Ooh, yeah. No, I don't have the prime or sand or strip. We're using our Chucky style paint, which sticks to pretty much anything under the sun, which makes these flips on a Sunday afternoon, like today, very easy. I'm gonna go ahead and move along over to these edges with a pretty decoration over here. So yes, I'm gonna be bringing paint all the way over here and I'm gonna show you what my next step is and this would explain to you why I really don't care about all these little pieces not being perfectly covered to the edge, right? Number one, we're gonna to wanna to take off all this extra C. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab a sand block. By the way, all the tools, the supplies that I use here on my vlog when I'm creating, you can find at junkmonkeypaint.com. Yes, we ship all over the country and into Canada. So what I'm gonna do is grab a sand block and that's what I'm gonna do, okay? I'm gonna sand down and it's gonna give me a nice, clean, distressed edge. Pull down. Pull down. What I'm gonna do is finish bringing the paint around the edge. I'm gonna go in for my shabby chip brush once again, and I'm gonna do what we affectionately call at the Junk Monkey the eyeliner effect or the edging effect, okay? Effect. This is where you put edging around your edges, but you can also bring it in a little further as well, right? So that way it makes the connection. So don't feel like you can't like kind of like pull your brush in a little bit. Just make that, you know, shabby edge. 
you want. You can also add a few little like brushes of that color here and there just to kind of pull it in. Let's go ahead. Now we've got to let the sides dry, but we can start distressing what's in here in the painted section right now. Okay, so you can add as much distressing as you like. That is totally your call. This is gonna be like a shelf with things being moved around into it. It's a magazine rack right now. And again, I'll show you in a second what I'm gonna use it for in my space. But I am gonna go ahead and put a coat of sealer over it as soon as I find it. Aha! There we go. Mr. Banana Peel thought he could get away from me. I especially want to use banana peel on pieces that are high traffic or get a lot of use, like pushing and pulling, putting things in and out. You know what I'm saying. And right over that section that we just painted. Let's just let that dry and of course our poly does dry clear. Yeah, she's coming together very, very nicely. I'm gonna show you real quick how I'm going to make use of this. Yes, it's to hold my scrapbook books, my scrapbook paper books. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody else buy these when you get them on sale, on clearance, or you get really good deals on them? Oh, I am a vintage paper lover. So I can go ahead and stack them all up here. It's gonna be so nice because right now they're laying flat on a uh, shelf and now I'm able to go ahead and drop all those in there. <laughs> yeah, you like that little clearance tag? Heck yeah, heck yeah. Oh, isn't that pretty? And we can go ahead, fill up both sides of it like this, you know, like these big, big books that you just rip apart. So this, I'm gonna go ahead and fill everything out in here. I've got a bunch more to put in there as well. And what's really cool is that this can sit now in my studio and this is all my designer paper collection. I can look through it so much more easier. And here's what I love as well. It's got a handle on it. It's projects on both floors of my shop. Just being able to take this right here, yay! It's gonna be so much easier and I feel like it has a home. So once again, Marie Kondo is gonna be so happy with me because I've given my designer paper collection a house right there for $4.99. Thanks for joining in for another daily vlog. You guys know I will be back again tomorrow. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell icon. What it does is it notifies you every single day when my video upload is ready. And I am ready to join you guys in the comments below. Tell me what you thought of this quick flip. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Bye.